Hello and welcome back to ABE 474 Indoor Environmental Control. In this uh, series of videos we'll be continuing uh, in the textbook for the course and this will be the last chapter we'll cover from our textbook. It's chapter 7, Solar Radiation. Uh, we'll be taking a look at um, calculating the value for the energy that is gained from the sun. So in the previous chapters that value was given, so in this chapter we'll learn how to calculate that based on uh, the surface we're interested in and the characteristics of the sun with respect to that surface. Um, this series of videos is going to be broken up into um, several small segments uh, in order to cover this chapter. Uh, the first section is just going to be an introduction. We'll uh, talk kind of a, to put things in perspective a little bit and then we will uh, kind of review some of the um, uh, uh, some of the background that we covered with respect to radiation and we'll talk about it specific to solar radiation and then we'll move on to um, the second section which will be uh, looking at the relationship between the earth and the sun and time and the third section will be about solar angles and the fourth section will then be about calculating the amount of solar irradiation onto a surface for your given scenario and we'll wrap up by talking about heat gain based upon the um, solar irradiation that's coming onto a surface. So let's go ahead and get started with our introduction. We're interested in solar radiation uh, because it can have a number of uh, effects uh, related to our design for um, environmental control. So we've already looked at and we've already seen the importance of understanding heat gain and heat losses from a building. Specifically, if we wanted to work with a system that has a solar passive design, we absolutely need to be able to calculate and understand the impacts of solar radiation. Um, and we can extend this out to um, applications that may or may not be related to indoor environmental control. Uh, and if we were looking at solar collectors, we would be very interested in uh, understanding the dynamics of the solar radiation onto a surface. And in all of these cases, what we really want to know is how much solar radiation strikes a surface and over what period of time. There are a number of uh, considerations that we need to uh, think about when we're determining how much solar radiation is coming onto the surface. Most of them, all of them, uh, are related to uh, the interactions between the sun and the surface that we're interested in. And so we can break those down into um, the location of the sun in the sky. the clearness of the sky, and the nature and orientation of the surface that we're interested in. We can also look at um, the amount of solar radiation that is, is uh, influencing a surface in um, a number of different ways. So here we're just going to highlight a little caution for making sure that um, when you're considering solar radiation, you're considering uh, a s scenario that's appropriate to your application. And so in order to be able to do that, it's important to recognize uh, the differences uh, in the way we think about solar radiation coming onto the surface. So let's look at two options. So we could look at a maximum solar radiation at a specific time. So over the course of the day and the year, um, 
the sun interaction with various uh, loca- with a specific location on the surface of the earth is going to be different and so the amount of solar radiation is going to vary so it's going to vary throughout the day and it'll vary throughout the year um, so we might be interested in finding the maximum at a specific time and we've already looked at um, this in previous chapters not specific to solar radiation but this approach whenever we're doing load calculations we really want to think about um, kind of worst case scenarios um, you would you could look at solar radiation either as a load for your cooling system or as relief for or heating load for your heating system that is not necessary for you to supply um, in which case you would need to consider do you want maximum do you want minimum do you want you know how much um, how much can you always expect to be contributing or how much can you at the most extreme scenario expect that you need to account for um, and so for doing load calculations you may be interested in maximums and minimums and and specific time like uh, amounts of, of solar radiation at specific times but you could also look at um, an average or an integration, uh, some sort of overtime measure uh, that's giving you uh, an indication of essentially consistency, um, uh, amount of radiation that you can expect uh, for uh, a extended period of time. And so in this case, you might be interested in that for something like a solar collector. Um, and then also if you were doing a passive design on your house, a solar passive design. So in, in these cases, we're more interested not in the extreme peaks, but in the consistency, the consistent energy that's being, uh, 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 that's coming onto our surface. Uh, let's step back for a minute and kind of think about, we covered radiation in our heat transfer chapter. Um, and now we're going to hone in on ra radiation that's specific to solar and also thermal. So we're specifically thermal radiation that is provided by the sun. So if you recall, radiation is electromagnetic. And if we think of in terms of our heat transfer, it's the transfer of energy by electromagnetic waves. And when we're talking about thermal thermal radiation, we're looking at uh, wavelengths spectrum uh, that results in a heating effect. So we're talking about radiation that results in a change in temperature of the surface that it's impacting. Um, this is going to include ultraviolet, visible, and infrared. And it's going to go from like 0 0.1 to 100 microns. Um, we might also see terminologies that are important. Uh, within the chapter that we're working on, whenever we see uh, the term radiant energy, it may also just be used interchangeably with radiation. So within this chapter, whenever we're talking about thermal radiation, radiant energy, or just radiation, within this chapter they're all referring to the same thing. So that's important to, to take note of in terms of vocabulary. Now in terms of relationships, um, so some of the, the governing relationships we know about radiation. Um, If we have higher temperatures, higher surface temperature of the emitting body, 
the more, so the higher the temperature, the more radiation is emitted. And I apologize if I s slaughter the pronunciation, but uh, Wayne's Law says that um, the wavelength of maximum emissive power is related to a constant divided by the surface temperature. And so you have different constant depending on which set of units that you're in. Um, and in this case, the T is your absolute temperature of your surface. And again, it's going to be in the respective units, either Kelvin or Rankin. Um, so just to kind of reiterate, what we're looking at here are the wavelengths of the maximum emissive power. Monochromatic, so big word there. So not total emissive power, emissive power at uh, a specific wavelength. All right, so let's look at this relationship uh, in a little bit of additional detail, so essentially with a plot. And then this plot is um, taken from uh, that presented in Albright, and he's essentially um, looking at the trend between wavelength in microns and emissive power. And in that plot, the highest temperature is the top line. The temperature goes down as we move to the shorter and shorter lines. Um, and essentially what this is demonstrating is that higher temperatures are higher, yeah, higher temperature surfaces emit shorter wave radiation. And so let's um, apply this uh, to essentially our two surfaces that we're going to be looking at for calculating solar radiation. So let's start with the sun. And our sun is going to behave like a black body at a very high temperature, 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 6,000 Kelvin. And this is, uh, as we follow our, our laws above, or even if you want to go up, the higher the temperature, um, the shorter the wavelength of the radiation. Um, so if the sun is at this very high temperature, um, you're going to get a very short wave radiation. So most of the emissive power is going to be at very short wavelengths. Um, but our building, on the other hand, is at a much lower temperature. And is going to be more along the lines of long wave radiation. And then we're going to be interested in something um, called the total or the global irradiation. So we're calling that irradiation is what actually comes upon the surface. It's going to be noted in this chapter as a capital G. 
we can have it either in English or metric units. And let's refresh ourselves that our absorbance plus our reflection, so So transmitted is equal to 1. And um, our emittance is the same as our absorptance for a specific wavelength, so at a given wavelength. So this is just a refresher and a little bit of extension from where we were when we talked about radiation a few chapters ago. If we're looking at emissive power, some surfaces are going to emit more energy at the same temperature. So, if our reflectance is zero, then we have a black body. And a, what a black body does is it absorbs everything that comes onto its surface. The governing equation for that is emissive power is equal to the emittance times the black body emissive power. All right, and then one final note here is the absorptance. For a building can be very different from the emittance for the building when you consider that you're at two wavelengths. So remember that um, radiation that's coming from the sun is shortwave radiation and the surface of your building is going to be at a temperature that's going to um, be primarily long wave radiation uh, and in that case your absorbance and your emittance uh, are in most cases not going to match up. So important to note and when we get to a problem like that hopefully you will uh, see that and it will make sense. All right, that's where we're going to stop for this section. So this is kind of just a refresher on uh, some of our terms about radiation and thinking a little bit in terms of solar, so kind of shifting our mindset. The next section is uh, going to cover relationships between the Earth and the Sun and how we measure time. So tune back in soon.